Okay, so uh, I'll start out formally. Buonasera. Uh, mi chiamo Antonio Franze, sono il professore di italiano e sono qui per presentare in questo viaggio in Italia quest'estate. And for those who understand Italian, lucky you. Uh, for your parents, I'm Mr. Franze, as you know. And I'm very excited for this trip this summer. It's going to be a great trip. Um, as you probably know, it was just approved by the Board of Ed last night. And <laughs> we're already doing the, the meeting. So we can't, you know, we're really working fast. We were hoping to have a meeting a little bit sooner, but it didn't happen, unfortunately. There's always a lot to talk about on those agendas. Anyway, so like I said, we're missing some people, but we're videotaping, and on, on top of that, you'll see that, you'll see that I have a classroom code on this PowerPoint sooner or later. It's right here. Um, the classroom code, if you have a piece of paper and you can't see, it is, and it's, put my presentation on as well, so we're matched up. It is C-W-X-M-R-M-D. C-W-X-M-R-M-D. And once you log onto this classroom, this classroom page under Google, you'll see um, all the information from tonight on there. I uploaded everything already, okay? So in the meantime, just listen up because everything will be at your disposal this evening. Okay, well, so on our agenda we have quite a bit. I'm gonna pull this baby out, just like a rock star. And <laughs> you know, it'll be better if I do it like this anyway. So on our agenda we have quite a bit. Um, typically these meetings are actually two of them, not just one in one long evening, but I'm going to try to speak somewhat fast in order to get us out of here, and uh, I appreciate your patience. So tonight we're going to be speaking about why travel is important, where, where we're going, our favorite partner, EF, our partner who's bringing us to, to Italy, the company EF Education First, the safety approach, what's included and what's not, and how to reserve your spot. If you picked up the materials on the table over there, you'll see that there's a a proper brochure booklet. I'm going to ask you guys to be sure to read, especially the last pages when you go home tonight with, or in the near future with your traveler. And you'll notice that I printed out all the school documents, as in the trip forms. Those are also on the classroom page. And on top of that, tonight's agenda in green. Okay? So let's take a look. I have a little video. Um, it won't be the video that I was planning on showing, but it's something similar. You'll notice that our trip this summer is a customized event, which means designer event. It is from yours truly. I designed it myself because I noticed in the past couple of years, the trip was awesome, don't get me wrong, but I noticed the kids were like running from place to place, especially this past summer when I took um, some students abroad. Uh, this not this past summer, uh, last year, 2017. We were just running from event to event, um, reservation to reservation. I just thought it was too much. So we're actually doing 10 day tour, and we're doing three major cities, but we're gonna have a little bit more downtime. And I think the students really would appreciate that just because they'll be able to sink in a little bit more, okay? Um, I'm gonna just put it out there. I'm sure a lot of you already know the price of the the trip. Last year it was 3600 This year it's $3,855. Um, and I'm sure you're probably saying, whoa, 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 that's a little bit high. To be honest, I agree. But um, ACIS, which is a competing company, this trip would cost $4,300 to $4,500. So I feel like it's a good price, but I'm sensitive to everybody's feelings because um, I know, you know, when you have more than one child, when you have one child alone, it's expensive. So you want to do the best. But I know a lot of students are uh, looking forward to doing some fundraising this summer, this summer, this year, and I'll definitely be helping them out. So we'll see what we can do, um, and we'll hope for the best. So it is 38.55. Last year was 3,600. We're getting two more days out of it. Plus, it's a customized trip, so it kind of gives you the reasoning behind the price. Um, and to tell you a little bit of a story, when I was about 24 years old. Uh, after having studied abroad, which I had paid $5,000 for, 
for the study abroad program. I then traveled for two weeks, 14 days afterwards, and that cost me, without the plane fare, uh, $5,000, so for two weeks. So I'm looking at it, you know, almost 15 years ago, you know, can I reason the price? I could reason it, but um, again, I understand the price is the price, and we have to live with it.
cheering. There was something like 50,000 people here at one time. Since the medieval age, we're right in the middle of it. You can smell it. How do you say, can I please have? Per favore, un panino con porchetta. Per favore, un panino de porchetta. And you do that. I love that. Um, <laughs> that was so good. That is a Yanis When they went to the, I want to say, the Vatican to go see the museums, I actually met that tour guide. He is, um, he and his wife are both tour guides, and we had his wife as a tour guide in 2016, and he was the tour guide for the other group, so it's kind of funny to see him on the video. Um, and this, this summer we're actually going to be doing the fresco painting. So you saw that in the video, that's part of the tour as well, and so I'm really excited about that. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, so why travel? Um, you know, what drives me to bring students abroad? I think uh, I have a pretty, I have an awesome group of students, and they're very passionate. They're very into the language, and they were, they love to conjugate with me when I make it fun. So, um, you know, I always had the dream. To, I had a dream once, and it was to be an Italian teacher. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I said, one day I too will bring students abroad. Um, no, I was really inspired by my mentor teacher and, and his colleague, and they soon after became my colleagues, and they brought students abroad, and I just saw all the story, heard all the stories, and saw the smiles on the students' faces, and now this is my third trip. My fifth trip with students, but my third trip as a lead uh, group leader, and, um, and so I see a lot of students who are very deserving. Um, all my students are very deserving, so I have to thank the parents and, and um, and the students who help pay. There's a lot of students who help pay for their own trips, so good for them. So I'd, I'd love to see Italy through the students' eyes. We learn some culture in Italian classes, and I'd like to bring it to life for the students. Um, and why is it important for students to travel? Like one of those boys said, 
you know, it's, it's important to see the world and, um, and realize how big it is and what the possibilities are in life. Now, I'm not just saying that everybody should just see Italy. Everybody should see the whole world. You know, I have so many places on my bucket list, as I'm sure many of you do as well. And it really gives them a sense of being a worldly citizen and what they could be in the future. Plus, by going away in high school, it gives them an idea of what it would be like to be away from college. Because I'm sure a lot of people will flee and, and go off to college, go to university and have their own, their own houses and their own lives and, or apartments. And so going off with this experience with their friends, it, it's a great experience. And I don't think they'll have an experience like this ever again. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping to have a friend of mine, uh, Chris Frizzell, Tommy's brother, um, who came to Italy with me last year. And he, if he comes in time, he'll be able to tell you about his experience. I have Mrs. Frizzell in the audience tonight. Hello, Mrs. Frizzell. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, um, why, um, why, are you being grant why are you being granted this tour? Of course, it's your dedication and it's a reward. You've put in a lot of work, so I figured it's something that I can put together, even though you guys are paying for it. But um, I'm putting it together and seeing if, and, and you know, we can experience this and have a lifelong memory. What do I expect in return? Good behavior, of course. Good, uh, some attention, of course, to the tour guides. We have many coming up. And just respect, respecto quantum, which is Latin for respect. We'll be talking a little bit about that later, but I don't think I'll have any problems with my Italian students. Okay, so let's mark the calendars. When will it take place? The first possible departure date is June 25th. The 25th allows us um, to leave on a weekday and return on a weekday, which means leaving on a weekday, returning on a weekday, you don't pay any travel fee. Because I don't know if you guys notice when you book tickets, it's always more expensive on the weekends. So because I've given the dates to the, the company in this manner, um, they have to respect my wishes. So if they give us a date that falls on a weekend, then we don't pay any extra because they're not doing their job. Okay, it's good for us. It gives us a couple of extra days to prepare, but um, you know we also get the benefit of not having to pay. We're going to be. Trying to get our direct flight all together. That's my main concern is getting a direct flight, but they will always tell me what they're about to purchase in advance. So I have some requests. Mine is um, my private bus, my direct flight, and hotels that are closest to the city center. And that's one of my biggest requests uh, direct flight. So we always request, uh, bless you, we always finalize our tour dates and what I mean, departure and, and return. About, I think it says through some months, about two months before departure, okay? And that's not just because, that's not because they're waiting for two months before departure. It's just to make sure that everything's settled from what I've been told, everything's settled and, um, and they can confirm it. And they have those seats and they don't have any errors. And, and it's really just, they waited out a little bit. And to where? Where are we going to? Let's find out. So we're going to Florence. From Florence, we're then going to Rome. Then we're going to Sorrento. And then we're going to Pompeii. So I said 10 day tour. It's really nine active days, if you want to play it that way. We fly into Milano. From Milano, go on to the next slide. We fly into, yep. Oh, God, I didn't even realize. It's like, Okay, so this is what I was talking about. <laughs> Sorry about that. Never had to use one of these before. Okay, so I talked about good behavior, respect, and uh, once in a lifetime, cultural immersion, all that good stuff. Here it is. So just to point that out. So like I said, the 25th is our first possible departure date. I'm really hoping for that date, to be honest, because we finish on the 26th as teachers, so I wouldn't mind getting out of work two days early. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I have all my grades done. There shouldn't be any tests that are taking place on Tuesday, the 25th, so I was able to squeeze that date out of the district. Okay, so where are we off to? 
Let's take a look. We're going to Florence. We arrive in Milan, and from Milan we go to Pisa. So could you imagine getting off a plane with about two and a half hour drive, could relax and just sit down and be like, oh my god, there's Italy. We arrive to Pisa. From Pisa, take our little snapshot. Um, we go to Pisa. Then we're off to Florence, where we see all the good stuff. We see the museums and uh, the Accademia, the Uffizi. We go to many churches. We get to take part in a, a fresco, a fresco, AFF, a fresco class. And as you saw in the video, we experience Florence a little bit more. Then we're off to Assisi before Rome which is awesome. It's one of those quintessential Italian cities that you will never see in any other part of Italy. Like, I love Italy, it's beautiful all around, but Assisi is probably my favorite city after Venice. But they're two completely different. I mean, Venice is one animal and Assisi is another. They're totally different cities. But Assisi is so beautiful, it's everything stone. The flowers are colorful, I mean, uh, it's the stonework, on the floor, to the buildings, to the um, the terracotta tegole, the the tiles on the roof, it's beautiful. We're off to Rome. We'll be visiting, of course, the Vatican. We'll see the Colosseum. We're going to be seeing all those major sites, throwing a couple of coins over our shoulder at the Fontana, <laughs> and after a couple of days there, we're off to Sorrento each day. Yes. Because <laughs> if I don't come back with a tan, I'll be angry. Um, we're going to spend a beautiful day at the beach. And then the following day is Pompeii. Okay? Pompeii is at the end. Pompeii is one of those things that when you go there, you just can't believe that somebody was able to dig this up. Hello. Um, somebody was able to dig it up, preserve it in the manner that they did. It's, it's like a opening up a present and realizing it was something good. Because <laughs> they just kept on digging and they realized that there were holes, cavities, around in the dirt. And um, when they started digging, they, there were some, they realized there were bones as well. Um, when that happened, what they did was, they started realizing where all these little cavities were and they started filling them up with plaster. And little did they know, when they, they dug around the plaster, the plaster were, were um, all forms of bodies. And so you actually see like the fingertips coming out of the plaster from the bones, the bones in their fingers. It's pretty awesome and we'll be seeing stuff like that. So I showed you some highlights on the right side. This is a more detailed itinerary to the left. Day one, fly in. Day two, Milan. Like I, we arrive in Milan, we go to Florence via Pisa, of course. Spend our third day in Florence. Our fourth day, part of it is in Florence. Uh, nope, actually the whole day is in Florence, and the fifth day is partly Florence, and then we go to Rome. We're in Rome for our part of our fifth day, our sixth day, our seventh day, our eighth day. We leave for Sorrento, probably early in the morning. And day nine, we go to Pompeii, and that evening we go back to Rome, and we depart the next morning. Okay, of course this is not in the presentation online. You can take a look. Plus it's in... It might be in that pamphlet, I might be wrong, but it's also online, it's also online. Okay, so why EF education tours? <clears throat> when I started my, rela my relationship with EF, to be honest, I just saw the price and I was like, that's a nice price. I don't think they're really taking advantage of, of our pockets. And from there, I really enjoyed working with the people at the company. Realizing that they have such a presence in, in, the, in the world is amazing. They have facilities and businesses and medical centers around Europe, which made me feel comfortable. Luckily, we haven't had to use it. But, um, and, and so they really have such a great deal going on and they treat, our, they treat us right. I found that their tour guides are all professional uh, and they know an abundance of of information, I learn something every time. They're really bringing great quality to these tours, and so that's why I stuck with them. We brought over 110 Brewster students to Europe through EF. 
we've um, also taken a domestic trip, from what I've heard from Mrs. Chalmers back in the day, to Washington. They have um, an education program, which is something that you can look into on your own, if you'd like to get some credits at another time. We have 50 years of experience from them, so it's really nice to know that they're, they're, um, they have that experience behind them in order to know, in order to gain as much information as possible and great experiences through them. And I'm gonna say not the lowest price, but definitely one of the lowest prices. So EF Tours, does it match what you're spending? Yes, it does. I believe it does. We get our round trip airfare, safe, quality hotel rooms, 24 hour bilingual tour director, on tour transportation, educational itinerary, guided tours and activities, breakfast and dinner, to, um, the lunch you do spend your own money, but the reasoning behind it is because it's free time and the students are able to go to different restaurants. It's their choice. So if you want to spend five dollars, five euros, or if you want to spend 20 euros, or if you want to spend 10 euros, it's really up to you. I realized I never had time. I thought I was going to have some free time. I was always bumping into students because we were always in, our, in the same vicinity that I was checking in on them. I mean, if I had lunch maybe three times out of an eight day tour, I was pretty fortunate. <laughs> but as long as they're eating well. We have traveler support team via telephone and internet um, to our donation page. So they set you up with a GoFundMe page, which is something that really attracted me to them uh, three, four years ago. And since we're starting this before Christmas time, you have that time to send out those nice emails, maybe even a card. This is a great year to bring back Christmas cards. You might spend about $10 on stamps, but you know what? You might get 10 times that, in, or more, hopefully. Let's say 200 times that. <laughs> I don't think so, I didn't do the math right, forget it. Anyway, you might get a lot back from your relatives if you play your cards nice, or right. Joke, joke. Uh, we share an online education platform. I spoke to you about that. That's something that you could definitely look into. Uh, they have some great programs for college students, but also high school students. If you'd like to look into that, please come and visit me. We can talk about it. And they have their, oh, you get a fancy backpack that everybody wears. And it's great. And at the end, the Global Protection Plan, which is something that I, I enjoy talking about because it, it makes you feel like God forbid something were to happen, at least you'd be covered and uh, it puts your mind at ease. As a matter of fact, they have another program called Peace of Mind. So we'll talk a little bit about that later. And that can be found in your booklet. Okay. So our safety plan here, we have our 24-7 tour director. I already spoke about some of this stuff. And um, of course my, my safety approach, my approach to safety, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. Here we have Ms. Castellano, Ms. Ayala, Ms. Tramontana, Ms. Cargano on the plane last year. Okay, our private tour. This is our private tour bus. We have Miki, who went back to Italy last year. Dr. Murray, who retired. That was our tour director, Mimo. And that's our bus in the back, top left. And the students are raising up in the air our bus driver, Antonio, same name as mine. Uh, they loved him so much. He became like the father of the trip. And that's what I like about having this private tour, which I'll also discuss right now. Because you get your own bus and uh, you get the same bus driver. You form a relationship with him that you're not worried about him stealing something off the bus. They're very professional. Um, they go above and beyond. And they also sell us dollar, uh, one euro bottles of water, which it's like, 30%, uh, 70 percent cheaper than what you'll buy on the streets. So keep that in mind. Okay. We get a private bus, a private tour director, one bus travel team, and um, private tours, flexible departure dates, so Eve can find us the best possible flights for our group. Um, and I put 35 students because uh, the price that we're paying right now is guarantee we have to guarantee 35 students to get that price now if we get less I have a plan and it is to possibly open it up to uh, you know this is a conversation that I'm having with you and soon it'll be on social media great <laughs> um, I'm getting a lot of 
students from the Spanish classes that want to take part in it. And in order to get our number, I'm willing to do that um, through a process which I'll talk about in the future. I'm not going to talk about it now. I have to keep my cards hidden for this one. I'm mm -hmm. sure you can respect that. So we'll see how, what steps need to take place in order to get our 35, our number 35 for passengers. Okay, the travel protection plan. Let's see what we have. So we have in our, in our price, the cost of the trip, $165 travel protection plan. Um, in our pamphlet, in our booklet, you'll read what it covers. I'll give you a little breakdown of it as well in a second. But it's something that, you know, it's like one of those times that if you don't pay for it, that's when something's going to happen. So that's why it's implemented in all the cost of the trip. Um, let me scroll down a little bit. It says, okay, so it really it covers um, a tour cancellation or interruption and for the whole trip. As you know, we've been having some freak weather here and there. Um, you know, you always have to be safe with uh, this day and age when there's any uh, travel bans and stuff like that. So it does cover that for us. It also covers your illness and, and not your illness, <laughs> an illness or accident should that take place uh, on a trip. So you'll have that insurance, which costs alone about 70 to $80. I've had to buy that for myself. And, and so you're getting the rest of it. And just keep in mind, Insurance is just $70 alone when you're buying it by yourself. And if we are, if we find ourselves missing a luggage, what they'll do if uh, the airlines or the company will put up $50 a day until you retrieve it. And of course, it covers any delays in, in uh, travel, in flights. So, like I said, 38.55. Some of this information I would normally split up into two meetings, so um, if it's a lot just for an interest meeting, I apologize, but at least it's good to get all our cards out into the open. And if you were to come on my trip, which I do hope you are, um, like I said, 38.55, and the, tr the company wants to express the importance of possibly doing the automatic payment because manual payment is when you're choosing to pay when you want to pay, it's you have to first get charged fifty dollars to do that because they feel that sometimes people aren't keeping up with the payments and in the end they're at jeopardy of not giving you your ticket when it's thirty days before uh, the departure. So what they've done for you is they told you if um, if you were to sign up at this time, you'll notice that it's about four seventy five a month, four seventy eight a month. And, uh, and so hopefully with that GoFundMe page and our perseverance in getting all the fundraising done, we'll be able to bring that down maybe three to $700 each kid. That's what I'm hoping because I was telling so many of my past students that it's important to do your fundraising on the side. You make more money on the side in a small group than you would with me. But we have some stuff up our sleeve this year that we were talking about in one of my classes. So let's see what we can, how we can make this happen and bring down that price. Okay, let me skip this guy because um, I'm going to be talking about this a little bit later. How lunches and snacks are on you, and um, and any overages on the baggage fee, on the baggage weight. We'll talk about passports in a second and tips. So. Like I was saying, what are you responsible for? Of course, spending money, beverages, lunches, um, and snacks. That, if I had to estimate, I would probably say a twenty to twenty-five dollar uh, price tag on a daily, you know, daily for those items. Our tour director may invite you to also a side, um, a side event. Like you know how we're doing the uh, fresco painting. There might be another event where we'll say, okay, listen, I have 15 tickets. Um, I only got 15. Which 15 of you want to go? And it might be from 15 euros extra to 25 euros extra. It's something on the side. And either myself or one of the other chaperones would uh, accompany the students along. And tips, it's something extra as well. That's 
uh, nine to ten dollars a day. And I'm estimating not the full ten days, just the nine days, because I'm not tipping anybody for travel time. <laughs> um, and it's about nine to ten dollars a student per day. And that's something that I was hoping to fundraise particularly for because we did an international dinner about three years ago and we were able to bring down for many students a no tip uh, dollar tag. They would fundraise so much that they were able to take at least that hundred bucks off of their, um, their plate. And so we'll be getting back to the tips a little bit later because I'll tell you what the tips go to. But if you're so eager to know, it goes to the tour director, the bus driver. Then we have our um, tour guides of the day. And that's it. Okay. So bus driver, tour guides, and tour director. So what it, I can't stress this enough. If you haven't um, gotten a passport in general, uh, it's always a good time to get it as a teenager because they typically last about 10 years, so you'll be great throughout the beginning of your 20s. But it typically takes between, let's say, a month and two months. I think it's pretty much two months. And where you can get your passport, we won't be needing visas to go to Italy, but in order to get your passport, you might have to pay a visit to either the postal <laughs> office and make an appointment with them, or go to the county clerk's office, which it actually takes less time going through the county clerk's office. You probably want to call them up and say, I have, I'd like to get an appointment um, to get my child a passport, uh, and they'll give you a time to come in. I believe they also take your photo there, but I can be wrong about that. I think at the... They do? At both places. Because I remember they would do it at the post office. Okay. So Ms. Frizzell is saying that they do do it at both places, so we're in luck. Now, if you don't have a passport as a, a parent, EF encourages that all parents have a passport, and the reason behind that is, God forbid something were to happen, they need to know at least one parent can fly. Okay? I'm not saying both of you do have to have it, parent, both parents, but definitely one parent should have it. Okay? Also, if you have your passport already, take a look at that expiration date, because I'm realizing that mine expires, I think it said June 2020, and my passport has to be up to date, or it has to be valid for six months after my return date. So if we return from Italy July 2019, I have to tack on six months and say, okay, is there an expiration sometime in between? Because otherwise, God forbid I got stuck in Italy, which would be a bad thing. But, <laughs> you know, they, they need to know that I have a valid passport to get back into the country. I'm not sure they just send me over anyway. Italy doesn't follow so many rules, but it's good to know that, right? And for those shopaholics, make sure that you don't overpack going back to Italy because that will also be on you for the, I think it's like 12 euros a, a pound or something or a, a, a kilo. Okay, so that's some small print. This is just getting into the little nitty gritty. I hate to bring this stuff up because I have such great students, but you know, people get inspired by others when abroad and without parents. So let's see what I have to say. You know, respect is very important, of course. Um, following student rules and regulations always apply when on a school trip. So you'll see this written down in both your handbook and our policy, no, 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 what is it called? Oh, it's behavior during school trips from Brewster Central School District. Students are required to follow all school rules and regulations as described in the Brewster High School Student Handbook. Specifically, any student found using or in possession of, of illegal drugs, um, i.e. alcohol, marijuana, vaping devices, um, or cohabitating while uh, will be subject to five-day suspension from school. Drug and alcohol cases will be referred to local police in Italy. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. You don't want to go to jail in Italy. It might not come out. But uh, what I do want to mention is that worse than Brewster Central School District is me. I'm like going to be one of those very, very strict Italian fathers. So don't make me start practicing that on the trip. And I'm, I'm directing that to the video, not to you guys. Okay? Just so everybody's fair warning. Because I do have the power to send people home on day two at your expense. Just to anybody out there. 
Okay. And students will be um, a, what am I saying? Students will be a search of the, oh, oh, I'm sorry, of course it's a typo. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the students may be subject to a search on a daily basis for me, just in case I suspect of um, any purchases, let's say, while we're buying some souvenirs like a Leaning Tower pizza or a bottle of liquor. You know, that's something that we frown upon. Um, so I do reserve the right to make searches. Before departure, um, to go to Italy, before departure to go back to America, entering hotel or bus, and so on. Okay. Like I said, if you check out EF page 20, EF program page 20, it'll also go hand in hand with what we believe here at Brewster in regards to student travel. So of course no alcohol, but we need to respect our curfew as well. That was, um, typically I don't, have, I don't really have trouble with that, but I have really good hearing. I can hear slamming doors because the doors in Italy are very, very uh, heavy and they slam behind you. So, okay, let's talk about something better. Like packing, yeah. Um, I don't really have to go through this tonight. I, I think we could probably bypass this. It's just talking about what kind of spending means you should bring if you want to bring an ATM card or you should pack it's going to be very it's probably going to be quite hot not probably it will be hot um, so just keep that in mind it doesn't mirror our weather here in America or in the Northeast I should say uh, we're going to be talking about um, how in Italy people will steal money from you and you won't even know it um, we've been very very lucky I haven't had any of my students pickpocketed, um, but we did lose a cell phone, and the student had put down his or her cell phone on a table, and when he or she was approached by a non-waiter, who was pretending to be a waiter, oh, the guy was pretending to be a waiter, he put down the menu on top of the student's cell phone, and then when picking the, wait, uh, the menu back up, he swiped the cell phone. And it was like the last day of the tour. I was like, oh my God, just the last day. So we, we were so close. But you know, that could happen to anybody because we as Americans, we put everything down. I mean, I put my wallet on the table. That's how bad I am too. But in Italy, I'm very vigilant, not only myself, but I'm always checking around and I, I teach my chaperones to do the same thing. Of course, if you have any medication, it, the forms could be found in our packet. And I think, well, I'll be collecting all the forms um, from the enrolled students by November tw uh, 1st or November 5th. But we'll definitely be having another meeting. So if our, our travelers take any medication, medication that um, they have any concerns about while, their time in, while they're in Italy, that we can have private meetings about that, you and I, parent to teacher, and so on. And of course, I'll be carrying, I carry around the emergency kit and I carry around the tip money and the passports are always with me or locked in the hotel safe just to let you know those are side notes do you have to tip at the hotel yeah. say it one more time do you have to tip at the hotel no hotel we don't tip as a matter of fact I don't think I've ever tipped in a hotel I know here it's somewhat customary <laughs> to leave money in the hotel room uh, yeah. sir did you have a question oh. And one thing at the, at the top was talking about covering for ladies and now gentlemen too. Um, you can't have your shoulders bare when entering churches and your knees. I mean, we could typically get away with maybe your knees showing, but it's more like mid-thigh that they're worried about. And that's for even gentlemen, because um, shorts are getting a little bit shorter for the guys, and Italians don't appreciate or, or I should say the churches don't appreciate it whether you're going in there for religious beliefs or just to see the beautiful architecture and the art, um, it's always nice to respect the rules of whatever location. Okay. okay, and transportation, I have to say, it worked so well. I was really proud of myself for thinking of it. Um, the last time we went to Italy with students, uh, everybody brought their children, their, they kind of carpooled and brought the students to JFK or whatever airport we use, we typically use JFK, but because we are in this area, they 
will also use um, Newark in New Jersey as a possible departure airport or return airport for that for that matter. But we all car carpooled and it worked out because I know the parents want to keep a hold of their children up until the very last second. So I appreciated it. We got there in a timely fashion. It, didn't, it was it went so smoothly. I was really really pleased. And it was nice to see you know the parents saying goodbye because when we're in a big crowd over here waiting for a bus, it's just so much going on. Parents are trying to talk to me. At least you guys trickle in one by one and, and I get to say goodbye to you guys too. Okay. So this is what I was talking about, the tip, the tip money. So it's about it's ninety dollars per person and um, not to be a stickler, I tend to I ask for certain bills because the larger bills can go to the tour director and the smaller bills can go to um, the other people like tour guides and tour and the bus driver. So we'll be talking about that in later meetings. And just taking a look at the bottom. Okay, when we're handing in our tip money, this is something that I, I just like to make sure that um, I do diligently because I would never want somebody to say, you know, I gave you the money or, or I say, you never gave me the money and then it's awkward. <laughs> So I have we both sign off at it at the same time, so nobody can say anything. Okay, great. That was our tour guide, as a matter of fact, um, in the Vatican. Okay. We talked about passports. Only, you only need a visa if you're not a citizen of the United States. If you're just a resident, you still need a visa. If you're a citizen, you do not need a visa. If you have dual citizenship, again, you don't need a visa because you're still a dual citizen of the United States. Okay. And we'll be talking about how to enroll and using proper names. Um, a lot of people forget how to spell their name when they're enrolling. So we have a lot of hyphenated names. We have a lot of uh, lowercase, uppercase with some, with like the Italian, like DiSalvo or McCarthy or, you know, the apostrophes. So we really need to be sure that whatever it says on our passport, or if you don't have a passport, make sure that you take a picture of how you uh, register for your passport, because I want it to look identical from your passport to when you enroll, okay? Because your tickets are typically all uppercase, they're all capitals, your name is all in caps, but just so we do our part right, it should be identical to what it looks like on your passport, because some people will be turned away at the gate um, I've been told by the company that they had some troubles years back, or they always have, they say they always have troubles. I don't know how true that is, but I would never want to try that out. That's the last thing we need. Um, as you can see, we have Mr. Joseph Stephen McCarthy. Um, make sure it's MC space McCarthy, okay? If that's how you spell it, in any case, and so on. Uh, I had one student back in the day, she, on her passport, only had an initial as her middle name because for whatever reason she just put it on there. So when she registered or enrolled on the trip, she had put her whole middle name. Well, they didn't buy it. They're like, nope, it doesn't look like your passport and your ticket is now different. So luckily, because I have a good relationship with EF, we didn't have to get charged $250 to change, change the name. But that could happen. I would hate to tap on another $250 to anybody's trip. And um, also parents, make sure you get your passports as well, like I said. Okay. Okay. So like I said, I'm hoping to get our direct flights. Um, and I don't even know what's on this slide. Let me take a look. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, yeah. We talked about having the 25th as our departure window. Uh, with a small window. The reason why I do it so early in the summer is just to make sure that if, when our students go off to college that um, at least they have a couple of weeks in between vacation and then orientation and even family vacations if we're lucky enough. We have a possibility of getting our direct flights but that might be um, with the sacrifice of chopping our our team up into two. Now that hasn't ha that's only happened when I had two buses my first year, but 
with only having one bus, I, I told them that is not an option for us. Um, so they said, okay, well, we'll put that on your first priority, and number one on your first priority list. We discussed having our 35 travelers and what happens if we don't have 35 travelers. I'm typically allowed to bring 40 to 42. In one case, it was 45 first year, but um, so we always have extra spots. It's just I want to make sure that we reach that 35. And if I only have, um, if I, to be honest, I was speaking about this today. If I only gathered 10 to 15 Italian students, I don't know if I would want to bring a whole bus of Spanish students. And I know you're probably saying, why, why not? Well, because then it's not as intimate as I was hoping it to be. You know, this is, these are for my students. I do an Italy trip for my Italian students. And to be totally honest, I think I have the right to do that. And number two, um, I don't know the students. I don't know. I mean, I could be bringing students that might not act as well as my students. Why should I put that upon my students and then, you know, waste your, your money? Um, of course, they'll always have a great time, but I would need to have a stressful trip because the students can sense that. And I would never want to put that upon um, their memories <laughs> of me, or would also all that money and then have a bad experience with students that they don't know or like. It's the truth. Hey, we don't all like each other, do we? But it's the, it's the truth and we have to live with it. And the last part, um, like I said, I'll talk to Ms. Horler and see what our next plan is. And that'll be in a timely fashion. Okay. We do have a little bit of a time issue. So because we're starting somewhat late, and uh, I say that regretfully, we are starting a little bit late. There's always a chance of the price changing monthly. But because now the, the traveling season is soon ending, they're saying that October 1st, the, tri uh, the, the price of the trip is subject to change. Now, in my experience, it's never changed October 1st. It's actually changed November 1st. But you never know what can happen. So I just want to put that out there. I hate having to give people time constraints because this is something that we should be taking time to think about. But I know a lot of us have been thinking about it since June. So it might not be an issue. But as you can see, the program price is 36.90 plus the 165, which makes the 38.50. Um, and on option plans. We talked about automatic payment. We talked about manual payment. Um, manual, just keep in mind again, it, it does cost $50 extra uh, because they're just ensuring that since you're paying that, um, you're doing it manually, they want to put a little fire underneath you to make sure that you're paying your bill. And automatic will pay you up 30 days prior to departure. And that's the biggest concern. If you're doing manually, it has to actually be sooner than that. I believe it's like two months, 110 days, not two months, what I'm talking about. It's a, if you're doing it manually, you have to do it 110 10 days before departure. But um, if you're doing it automatically, it's only 30 days before departure. So that's 70 days that you could drag out the payments. But they're telling you how much you have to pay. And those are always questions I am willing to answer when um, you call me and I'll we can talk about it. Sir? Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be doing fundraising mm -hmm. and I'm just curious how that fundraising will get done Good question. this and if you pay in full up front. Love it. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because that I totally missed that question, um, that thought. So what happens if we do some fundraising and now you've already paid it off? Um, well, guess what? You get reimbursed via check, that amount. It's retroactively put into your account. It's a great system. That's happened before, just to let you know, with our Brewster students. Uh, and EF is always very helpful when that takes place. Now, you can do it in two different ways. Um, I believe uh, I did the last time, one time I think I sent in a check with our fund, our, I think we have another trip. I'm sorry, I'm going through the Rolodex of trips. But um, we take the money that we raise, goes to the district office, they cut me a check for EF, it goes to EF, and EF then separates it all and puts it into your accounts, if that's the case. Okay? Now just to let you know, 
A lot of people are already talking about doing fundraising outside of the school, like bake sales, of course, in, in front of uh, stores on Sunday. I had, I don't know, I'm sure they wouldn't mind, but I had two lovely girls, Chloe and, what about Sam? No, Chloe and Miss Alt, Susie Alt, yeah. Uh, didn't want to say her last name, but I did. <laughs> they were fundraising like crazy, oh my, they made, some great money, I don't want to say the amount, because that is somewhat personal, but they made, uh, they cut out a, a big part of their expenses with that money that didn't come into my hands, okay? So they really did fundraise for themselves, they're very honest, and if you're fundraising outside of the school, you come to me, I give you a document, you bring it to that place, it's a form of insurance. Um, also, if we're doing something like the international dinner, which I really hope to do, um, and we're asking for donations for foods from different restaurants. Uh, I also give, we were talking about that today, I give you a document that states that the locale is donating this amount of food that would be worth this amount of money, and it goes into their taxes for the following year to show as a donation on their part. So we're always trying to work with people that you know want to help us out, never want to burn some bridges with poor business like um, Behavior. Okay, great. Okay. So I have to talk about cancellation because I was told to. Otherwise, I was going to leave it out. <laughs> but so there's an EF cancellation, there's a personal cancellation, and then there's a district cancellation. Now, I don't want you to freak out about the district cancellation. I don't see that as an issue. But you know, we always want to cover ourselves, right? So let's let's start with the EF cancellation. Well, we're lucky because if EF cancels it, then that's golden. I mean, they can't really fault us for that. So what would happen is they would either detour us, they would um, give us a different date. If that didn't work for somebody, they work with you personally. They're really good about that. Okay. But if it's a personal cancellation. I hate to even bring this up, but I had a student in the past that couldn't attend the trip, I want to say maybe a month or a little bit more than a month before our departure date. She had to cancel. And she, it was unfortunately because there was a, uh, an illness in her family and she had to then travel to another location. EF was golden. They, um, she got the full money back. And that actually went, you know, she should have been even charged a little bit of money for the cancellation fee. But they were very, very understanding. If there's family illness, if there's debt, if there's a loss of a job, uh, you really do get a lot through that travel protection and the peace of mind act that they have. And that's why I like EF so much. But if it is for different reasons, I have the cancellation, um, the standard cancellation uh, procedures that you will also see in the pamphlet. We have cancellation 150 days or more before the departure, and you just lose your $95 registration fee, um, and then there's a $300 fee. Once you hover a little closer to the departure date, 149 49 days to 110 days before the departure day, there's that same $95 be um, non-refundable. You, of course, lose your global protection plan on both number one and number two, which is the 165. And um, with one and two, you can always replace yourself with another person. And if I believe if that happens, you actually don't get charged the 300 and the 500 dollar fee in number one and two. So if I find somebody to take my place, um, I just have to pay that $100 fee to change the names. It's a great deal. That's happened before, uh, actually two, maybe three occasions. I remember two off the top of my head. And what happened was, the one that actually didn't want to go anymore, I replaced him with a girl, and then he came crawling back, wanted to get on the trip, and he had to go through the process all over again. <laughs> and so it worked out because he had a great time, and I was happy that he was able to come. But it was funny how that happened. And, um, and kids are always trying to get on a trip, so I know I could, I could get a replacement. Okay? Unless it's too late, and then it's, you know, it's not in my hands. Number three, it says cancellation 
um, 109 days or less, what happens is a replacement is no longer an option. You do get charged your night. You don't get your 95 registration fee back. Uh, you don't get your global protection plan, and you lose 50% of the program price. So that's 100 days, which is about a little bit, you know, let's say three months or less before the trip. And then, of course, cancellation close to departure. There's no refund, and luckily, I've never had to deal with that. But you never know what can happen, except for that one incident, and the girl got her money back because it was it was a horrible situation, and uh, they were really good about it. I was really impressed. Any questions before I just continue and sound like nobody has a question? Okay, great. Okay. What happens if district cancels? Let me tell you the truth. EF sees that we're doing it through the school, but EF doesn't have any business through the school. They just have me as the middleman. So really, Brewster is only um, associated with this trip because I'm associated with the trip. So if Brewster were, was to say, oh listen, we have to cancel, EF would say, well, you're still going on the trip, okay? Because, you know, it's, it's a totally separate entity. Now, that could get a little fishy, but there's a document that EF would give you to say, I am you know, not in any way associated with Brewster High School while I'm attending this trip. And so that's how you can get around it. Um, I'm not so informed on what else that document says, but, and I know I've kind of given you a little bit of a summary in a more casual way, but that's what the program was telling me, the company was telling me. So again, I wouldn't say that this is something that would happen. Um, I'm confident. We'll be very lucky, but just in case that were to to occur, uh, I, I would assume that the district would only cancel it um, if something major happened. <laughs> I don't even want to think what that could possibly mean. Okay. And if you don't feel com confident with that response, um, I can certainly get a representative to give me. Um, I'm going to actually see what that document looks like and have them draft a letter if you are interested. And I could also put that onto my classroom just so you. You're, you're more comfortable with that, a response to that question. Okay, so here's my classroom code one more time. And you can find the following documents that are also in your possession, minus the policy, the Board of Ed policy, 4531, which just talks about what kind of procedures I have to go through as the group leader. So there's a lot of red tape, and I do it with, um, with the goal of making a great memory for your children. And so, this, I believe, concludes our trip presentation. How to enroll? Well, that's a good question, Mr. Fonte. You can go over that. Guess what? It's very easy. <laughs> so, you're going to be, um, well, one, you have this on your pamphlet. It's the little label on the front. Number two, you could click on this link once you enroll into Classroom. Or number three, you can write it down and then just type it in into your computer. How much do you have to pay off the bat? Good question. $95 for the uh, enrollment. And then whatever you'd like to put as a down payment. When I say whatever, I believe uh, there are options. But I know in the past that kids have enrolled with $95 without putting anything down. So I unfortunately can't see that because I've never gone that far into the website. Uh, I don't have. I have the, you know, the leader, uh, the group leader profile. Uh, yes, Miss. Yeah, you're locked into it. As a matter of fact, that was something that I deleted from this presentation. <laughs> so I'm glad that you brought it up. Uh, yes, you are locked into the price. Now, I did mention that in my experience, the price, they tell you that, I think, to just kind of scare you. But, you know, we all fall into that feeling. And I just make sure that I talk to that with my parents, with my parents, my students' parents, and, and just, just in case that were to happen. Now, typically, it goes up November 1st. 
not October 1st, but I think they're just trying to put a little fire on fire under all of us. Sir. Good question. So when do we have to set up the payment plan? It is upon enrollment. Now, if you were to start out with manual, you can change into automatic, just to let you know. That has happened in the past. As a matter of fact, come the 110 days before departure, EF calls me and tells me, listen, you have to get these people onto an automatic payment plan. Otherwise, um, we, can't, we can't print out the ticket because they want their money. Natural. Um, so eventually, you're going to get onto that automatic payment plan, and that's about it. Yeah. So you could start off manual and go into automatic, just because you know it depends how much you want to put in. But I believe you could always put in more money when you're on automatic anyway. You know, just like you would pay your mortgage. Like, just like pay my mortgage today, but next week I might want to put a little extra just to help me out. Yeah, you do. I believe so. You know, that's a good question. I I don't think so. I want to say yes, but I don't think so. <laughs> Any other questions about payment plans? And you might even have an option to to like park credit if anybody's interested in that. Park credit, park. Um, you know, checking account or yeah, e-check. Okay, and I believe that was the last slide. Um, okay, listen, I just want to thank you so much, and I am here to field any questions, personal questions or public questions. So don't feel like you have to rush out. Who are the chaperones? Ah, good question. Okay, so um, as you know, I am. We have Mr. Maggiato, Mr. Madg. Yeah. You know, he's attracting a, he's a, a lot of students, I know, <laughs> since he's well liked. And then we have Ms. Uh, Ms. McCann from Guidance. I'm very excited to have her. She's great. And Ms. Horler. And then, so, two females, one. What am I missing? And, oh, Ms. Villaverde. Ms. Villaverde, yes. So, I guess she's a fave amongst the students too. So. Okay, Chris, you have a question? For tomorrow? Okay, hold on. Oh, do you want me to put it on camera? Do you want me to put it on camera? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Ah, yes. So those are some things that I talk about later on, just because otherwise we'd be here until 12, but I don't mind answering. I love these questions. We have, how many people are in a room? Okay, so this is how it works. I, this, I can't believe I, I don't put it into the first meeting just because the students always ask me this. We have, it could be three to four students. Now, I usually am given a cluster of rooms and I have to put them together. So at the end of the year, when we get closer, I have a meeting and say, okay, tell me your, your preferences. Who do you want a room with? And I'll put you into your own little clusters and I don't really create any enemies. And when I say enemies, between me and the students, I usually make everybody happy. Um, EF does a great job with getting me threes and fours. And in some cases, you might even see a two. Like one room, that's a two. I'm not saying in every hotel that happens because you might have to try to finagle yourself another friend to make a four because there might be a chance where it might just be all fours, which means somebody might have to get split up. Okay, with that being said, um, that doesn't always happen. I usually get enough threes and enough fours in a room. Um, and the fours are, they have nice, decent sizes because if we are in a city center, it's not directly in the middle of the city center where the rooms are this big. We typically get the hotels a little bit outside of the city center. Like when we were in Florence last year, we were a 10 minute walk to the city center but our rooms were bigger. They were actually the biggest out of all of our, out of all of my trips. Uh, then when we were in Verona, it was like a, an American hotel. 
It looked American inside. It looked like a New York hotel, larger rooms. When we were in Rome, oh, Rome, we were also considered city center because we were still on the metro line, but we have a private bus, so we don't have to worry about it. And those rooms were also larger. So we typically luck out. And that also affects our price because because I, uh, because I choose outside of the city center, they always go straight for what's closest, but because I chose outside of the city center, my price is always less than another group that's like, nope, I want to be right directly in the center. Um, so by me telling them, no, we don't care, we're fine, we're fine with it, they give us a lower price at the hotels, um, because otherwise, you know, the price could always go up in some way or another, right? Hotels, you know, better flights, different time frames. And Mr. Ruggiero can tell you, I know he's in the travel business. So. That's a good, that's a good question. I wouldn't know who else would be doing, I know there's a Disney trip, but I don't know, I don't think it's necessarily seniors. Uh, Marching band. And yeah. Um, I know you're thinking probably like another Iceland trip. I don't. I know they're not doing Iceland. They're not doing another Iceland. I know that. But, but was it only senior? I thought it was. No. I'm not really sure. It was not. It was not. It was not only a senior. Uh, a senior. Started out that way, and then they needed more kids. Uh, but they're not doing that again this year, are they? I I know there's not going to be an Iceland trip. That's coming from the horse's mouth. So, Isabella, they they gone. Has it already been done? Is working on. What'd you say? Is so it's been said that there's a possible Peru trip in the mix. I'll have to find out about that um, because it'd be I'd rather not say it on camera. <laughs> You know, I mean, Let me you have to get on. these things approved, and you know, and I know it takes what it takes some time to get these approved. So it could possibly be for this year or next year. So I can't really tell you. I'm going to tell you no, because <laughs> I want Justin on my trip. But any other questions? Okay. I hope I didn't put you to sleep because no. I know with air conditioning, my monotone voice at times, and. Um, just being tired from the day. I've fallen asleep in these chairs numerous times. <laughs> like more than I can count where you're like, do one of those, oh God, there's people around me. Uh, so I apologize. I'm typically a little bit more animated than this, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, if you'd like to talk to me, and um, I'll stay right here. Otherwise, have a buona serata. Grazie. Thank you very much. Buona sera.